you also shared earlier that the four plus one kind of allowed you the time to maybe get more narrow on what you wanted to study, what your dissertation was focused on. Maybe t tell us more about how that process helped you as well as what is your area of focus? Yeah, so I think during my master's, I definitely knew that I was interested in maternal health, knew that I was interested in maternal mortality and doulas, but I feel like a lot of our undergrad training and even a good portion of our master's training is really just giving you the terminology and the tools to be able to go out and to do this work. And so while I had had a few smaller RA positions, I had done a little bit of evaluation, I had done a little bit of qualitative work, I hadn't really had the time to like think about my own ideas or think about my contribution to the literature, what holes that I saw. And so my thesis was kind of my first opportunity to do that a little bit. Um, my master's thesis ended up looking at different ways to evaluate a hospital-based doula program. And so in order to do that, I did do a miniature literature review. I was able to compare and contrast different frameworks. And I ended up choosing a framework and then applying it to the program that I was evaluating for this um, assignment. And then in all of that, that was really kind of where a lot of my questions stemmed from. I, I saw a lot of problems, to be completely honest. And I was like, well, this is problematic, but I can't solve everything in this one paper. Um, and so that was really my first opportunity at that thought exercise. And I think was really influential for me because then when you get to a PhD program, you hit the ground running, you're learning different research methods. And I think it's helpful when you have a topic or at least a few topics that you're interested in, and then you can apply your coursework back to that material. So things feel more grounded and more situated. And so, yeah, I, I think my four plus one was influential in the fact that I was able to try out different topics in my different classes. I was lucky enough to be able to do a thesis that I was super interested in. And that kind of kickstarted a lot of brainstorming for me that still is alive and present today. Well, I appreciate that. And that that is, uh, I think it's, it's good to hear that because it just helps other people think about how can I really like come in and maybe understand that this smaller project that I'm working on right now might give me the spark to say, oh, I need to, I need, oh, I want the answers to these questions and I might need to pursue uh, additional education to kind of like guide that as well. Uh, so, so that, that's cool. You also spoke about the, actually, before I get to that question, earlier on, we were talking about how black feminism has, is, is something that you embody in your research and the work that you do. How how do you pull that into the work you do as a as a researcher as a PhD student? Yeah, so I think unfortunately for me, I haven't really had formal Black feminist training. I'm not even really sure what that would look like. I you know I took sociology classes, I took WGSS classes, I've taken a few African American study classes, and so I've had opportunities to read literature and engage in conversation with classmates, but a lot of it I've also done on my own, um, just things that I've read and processed and then, you know, maybe doing a little more research online of what is the conversation, what, what am I missing here? And so I think because of that and because of that embodiment, it isn't even something that I necessarily always seek out to include. I think just very much how I show up in my work is of the Black feminist tradition and is in alignment with my research goals and my other just larger personal goals. I think to give a maybe more tangible um, example, I think the smallest one I can think of is when I'm giving presentations, I typically start with a positionality statement. I know that those are a hot topic and I think there are very valid critiques of them, but for me, I approach it based off of the understanding from the Kabahi River Collective. They really truly remind us that the personal is political, and I think I'd be doing a disservice to my work and to my audience by not sharing the ways in which 
I am entering the space, I'm entering my research and what lenses I'm analyzing with. And so when giving a presentation, I have a little blurb that I edit um, based off of what the project is. And I share that as an invitation for the audience to be able to call me out on, you know, any potential biases. I don't just laundry list a bunch of identities. I don't really think that's helpful, but I talk through some main experiences. I talk through my training. I talk through, you know, different axes of power and how that interacts with potential work that I'm going to present. And I think that opportunity of reflexivity has actually made me a stronger researcher. And it has allowed for people to ask questions of, hey, like, do you think your background in X, Y, and Z, you know, potentially biased how you interpreted this? And I think that is what research is about. It's not necessarily supposed to be like, this is knowledge, this is truth, but it's a way to engage in a systematic conversation. And I think that's hard to do when we act like research is neutral. And so that's one way. Um, One of the ways Black feminist thought um, and thinking influences my work I'm sure there are many others, but (laughs) that's the first one that comes to mind and I think is the easiest to digest. Yeah, I I appreciate that. And I I definitely think it is just important for all of us to show up. And like, I I think it's like to reflect on our own experiences and then show up as authentic as we can. And to, to your point, as well as like, be held accountable to whatever standard that is that you want to be held accountable for. Um, and because I think we all need that. And I love I love the, the positionality of, of you saying that um, research is like a conversation. And I think that is something that we oftentimes miss a lot of the times, or we aren't able to have a lot of that conversation. So I appreciate you bringing that back into the conversation around this. Uh-huh. I'm glad. Yeah, thank you for giving me space for that. I think one other thing I will add is that it's definitely a learned practice. <laughs> like, I'm sure I'm not perfect. I'm sure there's things I'm missing. But as someone who does have a really big interest in qualitative research specifically, I I do think it's even more important. And as someone who talks about Black maternal health experiences, who talks about death, honestly. Um, I think also my identity is tenfold more um, important in those situations. And so, yeah, I think just being able to name it opens that conversation. And it's a practice that I wish more of us would engage in. And maybe what what are some of the things that you say you are learning or getting from this program that are going to help you excel, whether that's qualitative, quantitative skills, I don't know, so- sociology of health and illness. I feel like there's a lot of cool things that you can learn around sociology that could be applied. So, Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. My PhD program is definitely interdisciplinary and is also designed in a way where you, you know, you have your formal classes that you have to take, but there's opportunities for you to choose classes as well. So you can also gear it towards your interests. I mean, I think the biggest thing at the end of the day is, right, you're getting the degree. That's what gets your foot in the door. That's what signals to people that you are a researcher, you are an expert. I think the next level is getting those research method skills. And so while I had done qualitative research previously, I had never taken a formal qualitative class. And so I had that opportunity and that was amazing to, you know, be able to have, you know, laid out, this is, this is how to do this. This is also a citation of how to do this. This is a talking point for when people tell you qualitative research is not as rigorous. And so to be able to have that formalized training um, was super important. And then I think also just being able to network the people you're working with are your colleagues. You have no idea all the places that they're going to go. You have no idea all the places you're going to go. And I think I'm super, super lucky to have come in with an amazing cohort of brilliant people who I absolutely love working with and absolutely love learning from. And so being able to take classes with them, being able to engage in critical conversations, being able to read theory, um, that has really been impactful for me. And now I am transitioning out of the class space and into the dissertation phase. And so really taking those lessons with me as I craft my own 
dissertation project, all, all the things. <laughs> yeah.